In this video, we're going to look at the chain rule and the case for one independent variable. So chain rule. So here is the setup. So we have w, and that will be a function of two variables, say x comma y. And here x is actually a function of time. So x is equal to x of t and y is also a function of time, so y is equal to y of t. And the chain rule says the following. We can take the derivative of w with respect to t, which is the independent variable. So dw dt is equal to, well to get to t we first have to go through x. So we take the partial derivative of f with respect to x. So that'll be del w, del x. And now we're at x. So now we compute dx dt. And this is a regular derivative because x is a function of one variable. So it's not del x del t, it's dx dt. Or we can first access uh, y, so del w del y, and now that we're at y, we take the derivative of y with respect to t, so dy dt. If that didn't make sense, um, it's okay. Um, this is a, supposed to be kind of difficult. Let me draw a picture here, uh, which might be beneficial. So let's see. Um, use a different color. So here's w. Okay, and I'm going to put it in a little circle. And we know that w is a function of two variables. So it's a function of x and it's a function of y. So put little arrows like this. So w depends on x and y. And then x depends solely on t. So it's a function of a single variable. And y depends solely on t. Again, it's a function of a single variable. Okay, and then from this diagram we can get the uh, chain rule. So watch this. To get from w to x, we have to take a partial. So that would be del w del x. And then to get from x to t, it's a regular derivative. So it's dx dt. And to get, to, to get from w to y, it's a partial. So del w del y. And to get from y to t, it's a regular derivative. So it's dy dt. Okay, so let's go ahead and write down this rule again, but only by looking at this diagram. So dw dt is equal to, so I'll show you how to follow it. So first you have to take the path uh, through x. So it'll be del w del x, del w del x. And then you take dx dt, so dx dt. And look at that, it's exactly what we have up here. Plus, and we take the path through, w, through y, so del w del y. And then we do um, dy dt. So whatever works for you, you can draw the picture or you can just think about it. Um, let's do a simple example of, of using the chain rule. Let me see if I have one here that's relatively um, simple. Yeah, here's, here's one that we can try. I haven't done it yet. So ex means uh, example. So we have w, okay, and that's equal to x times the sine of y. Okay, x times the sine of y. And x here is equal to um, e to the t. And y here is equal to pi minus t. And the question in this problem is to find dw dt. So find uh, dw dt. And the second question is to evaluate it at t equals zero. So the second question is to find dw dt at the moment in time when um, t is equal to zero. So you can do this without using these calculus three chain rules, right? You can just replace x with e to the t, replace y with pi minus t, yeah, and use the product rule, and you could do it that way. 
However, let's let's do it using um, our chain rule so we get some practice with that. So solution. I'll start by writing down uh, the chain rule again. So we have dw dt. Okay. And we, so we're taking the derivative with respect to t. So to get to t, we can go through x or we can go through y. So going um, through x, we have del w del x, right? Because w is a function of two variables, so this is a partial. Once we're at x, it becomes a regular derivative, so dx dt. Or we can access t by first going through the y variable. And again, since w is a function of two variables, that's del w del y times dy dt. So it's a lot of thought um, when you think of it like this, but I think it's good. I think it's good for you to think of it this way uh, because that uh, invokes understanding. All right, so let's keep going. So dw dt, this is equal to, so let's see, del w del x. So we're taking the partial of w with respect to x. So uh, all of the y's are constants. So the derivative of x is 1, so we just get sine y. Right, because it's a constant, right? The derivative of x is 1. And then dx dt, well, that's the derivative of e to the t with respect to t. That's just e to the t plus del w del y. So now the x is a constant. So the derivative of sine is cosine. So this should just be x cosine y times and then dy dt. So um, that's just going to be negative 1. So this here um, would be the answer, I believe. So this will be e to the t, e to the t, e to the t, uh, sine y, sine y, uh, and then um, minus, minus uh, x. Well, wait, 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 wait a minute. Not x. Yeah, del w del y. That's right. X. Mm -hmm, x cosine y. I got a little confused. We're not done. Um, we, we still have um, t's here, right? So we need to get rid uh, y's and x's here, rather. We need to get rid of all of these. So what we can do now is we can replace uh, everything here with t's. So this is e to the t, and then sine y, that's going to be sine of pi minus t, okay? And then minus x, so that's going to be uh, e to the t, and then cosine y, that's cosine of pi minus t. Okay, and that's it. That would be um, the final answer. So uh, when you get here, you have to convert uh, everything back to t's, right? Because you want your answer with um, t's, okay? Um, what else? Uh, now we're supposed to plug in zero, so let's go ahead and do that. So dw dt at the moment when t is equal to 0 is equal to. So we're going to plug in um, 0 for the t's. So we get e to the 0 sine of, and then t is 0, so sine of pi minus, and then we get e to the 0 cosine of pi. So uh, e to the 0 is 1, sine of pi is 0, cosine of pi is negative 1, and this here is 1, so we get negative, negative 1, so we just get 1. And that is the answer. So I hope this video uh, has been helpful. That's it.